All right. Have and have not fans. Now, I know it has been quite some time since I've done a top anything on this show. Oh, yeah, about this show on this channel. So we have a top 10 list because you all have spoken like, you know, after the whole uh, last week was pretty messy, to say the least. I mean, fans on this channel were going off. It was about the whole Justin and Jeffrey scene. You have people who were like, yeah, how did you hate that scene? And people was like, it was unnecessary. But in the midst of that, somebody was like, you know what, man, I love your channel, but I miss having fun discussions, doing countdowns and everything. So with all that being said, this is a top 10 WTF list of the haves and the have nots. I'm talking from C episode one to the present. I'm talking about the top 10 what the moments of the show. Keep in mind several things. Number one, this is my own personal opinion. My own opinion, which is a dangerous word on the internet, hence why the Justin and Jeffrey video caused so much controversy. But I'm talking about 10, when, when I say top 10 WTF, now I know some people are like, get on with the video. Listen to me now, I wanna break it down. I'm talking about the top 10 moments that I, that had me completely shot. Like, Tyler Perry, I can't believe you did that. Or, oh my God, I can't believe that character did that or said that to another character. The show has gone almost, what, 120 episodes now? 113 or something like that. So obviously, there might be some moments on this list that I've either forgotten about or they might be different from your list. So in the comments below, let me know what top 10 moments you feel are on your personal list because I might read some of the comments and be like, you know what, that should have been my number five, but I forgot about it. But when I made this list, I wanted to pick 10 moments that I still remember very well, but also moments that really had me going like, wow, you know what? They uh, Tyler Perry used this as a season finale or Tyler Perry wrote this in such a way that it still has people talking today. And most of these things are moments that I remember doing blogs about back when I did nothing but blogs, not videos, and they got a lot of decent views. So I even went back to WordPress and pulled up my stats from when I started blogging to the present looking through some of the top blogs and some, not all, of the haves and have not blogs that I did are on this list. So with that being said, we're gonna dive into it from number 10 to number one. I sat down, wrote them out, picked an order in which I want to do them. So please, I urge you, keep in mind, this is my own personal opinion. I'm doing this video because you all wanted it. I even did a poll in the community tab about if I did a top 10 video, which one of these subjects would you want? And by a large margin, you all wanted me to do top 10 WTF. So with that being said, let's dive into number 10. All right, so number 10, Candace reveals to Hannah and Benny that Quincy Jr. is dead. This occurred towards the end. I think it was the episode before the season two finale, which was one of my least favorite episodes of the entire series. But basically in tears, Candace tells a story about how she actually tried to leave Quincy, but wouldn't allow, uh, I believe Quincy said he wouldn't allow her to take their son without a certain amount of money. If I'm not mistaken, this was once, I think this was the time that Benny took out a mortgage on the house to get money for Candace. And Candace gave that money to Quincy to take their son. But then Quincy said that he took them fishing because their son loved fishing, but then pushed him off the bridge or whatever. And Quincy Jr. was dead. And that moment I feel deserves to be on this list because it was the first time in the show up until that point that Candace was really in tears because I remember that blog I did. I was talking about how she could be lying because she's fake cried before. And then in the finale, we only had one scene of Candace and uh, Ben, uh, excuse me, Candace and Hannah together. I believe Benny was asleep at the time or yeah, he was in the back. I don't think Benny was in that episode, but basically, you know, Hannah is sitting down with Candace and they're talking and it's a nice scene because she's talking about the Bible and Candace is rolling her eyes. But 
in my heart I know that baby isn't dead and it wouldn't be until a while long a while later that we find out Hannah was right that Quincy Jr. was still alive unfortunately not for long but he was alive but yeah this was a interesting WTF moment because it's just like whoa 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 remember up until this point it's like every time that Candace and Hannah had screen time together can um Hannah would bring up the whole situation of where's my grandchild where is he it's like I remember that um Ben well this was after Benny got out of the coma and invited Candace over and Candace at this point had no money at all and uh, she was wearing a hoodie she was on the run from the uh, because at this point she had just gotten out of the grasp of the Malones Jim cleaned out her apartment she had nothing and I think she was staying with Jeffrey at the time. And, you know, Hannah kept badgering her about this um, child. And that's when she finally went, he's dead. And then that was this episode ending. I was just like, well, damn. So we move on to number nine, Veronica burning down her house. This was definitely an interesting season finale. Um, Yeah, I, I think... If I'm not mistaken, this was actually in the preview for the episode, so we knew the house burning was going to happen, if I could be wrong. But yeah, the fact that she burned down the house with her husband asleep in it was definitely... I mean, this was like the Ice Queen doing the exact opposite of her element, from being ice cold to hot as hell by burning up the house. I mean, the scene of David running out of the house and... Uh, it was all so perfectly written. The fact that she so nonchalantly walked into the bedroom, dumped gas all over the, uh, what, around the bed, dropped the match, sat on the front stoop, lit up a cigarette, and just let the entire house burn behind her. Then when Jim and Catherine show up, Dave was like, <laughs> she tried to kill me. <laughs> she tried to kill me. Which is interesting how David reacts in that moment, but then later on plays it off as, oh, um, she was just doing it as a cry for an atten- a cry for attention. Yeah, that's right, David. Attention. So, yeah, this was a new level of crazy for Veronica. Like, we've seen her, you know, be controlling, blackmail, and everything. But for her to actually burn down the house, yeah, that was crazy. And honestly enough, uh, ironically enough, number eight actually happens right before number nine. Uh, number eight. Uh, when Veronica kisses Benny, which starts their toxic fling. I don't even think of it as a relationship like a cougar or whatnot. But, um, yeah, um, we all know that Jeffrey told off his mom. I think the episode was called Enough is Enough. I think that was the season three finale. That's when uh, Jeffrey literally told off his mom to her face like he, she, he was sick of... Uh, being mistreated by her because he is gay. I'm a gay man. I love men. Um, then you had Quincy beat me. You got Melissa. You had me to get her pregnant and all this stuff. And then I'm done. I'm done. And then he walked out of the house and she was like, what the hell are we going to name this baby? Then she gets a phone call from Benny to pick her up from jail. If I'm not mistaken, this was right after he crashed the car into Quincy's at the ball, uh, strip club and beat him up and got arrested. Uh, you know, he's grateful and she asked to drop uh, ask Benny to drive her home because she had been drinking. And uh, I think Veronica said at some point, uh, pull over here. And then Benny, uh, you know, she was like, you know, my husband was cheating, uh, cheated on me. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. And it's like, you mean that? And she's like, yeah. And then she leans over and kisses him. Then they kiss some more. She kisses his neck. And goes down and uh, yeah, stuff happens. So the reason this is on the list is because, yeah, it definitely was a WTF moment. Like I didn't see it coming. Who wrote this into the show? I feel like this is one of the most random, bizarre twists that Tyler Perry has put into the show. So whether you love or hate the Veronica and Benny dynamic, you have to admit that it was pretty shocking, like crazy. Then we get to number seven, and the reason number seven is on this list is because of the fact that I remember doing a video the morning of the season four, was it season four? Basically, it was right before Quincy Jr. died. We know it was going to be a shootout at the motel that Hannah, Benny, and Quincy Jr. were staying at, and Candace as well, but we didn't know who would die. 
And I did a video. I just I didn't feel comfortable with the idea that Tyler Perry was w uh, willingly going to kill off a child on screen. Little Lizzie was mentioned to be dead several times. Um, what mowed down so badly by the car that they couldn't even do an open casted funeral, but they didn't show any of it. But when it came to Quincy Jr., it's like there's no way he would die. And I remember doing a video talking about logically from the point of the story, his character would make the most sense to, to be killed off because it would have the biggest impact. And unfortunately, I was right. And that video became one of the biggest videos on the channel. I think even the episode review did as well. But yeah, that was interesting that Tyler Perry would kill off a child. From the script, yes, it did make sense because Quincy Jr.'s character really didn't add much to the story in terms of being a character. Cute kid, awesome actor, but at the same time, in terms of Quincy Jr. as a character, he was more of a plot device. Uh, then we get to number six. Yeah, this is a very interesting one. Catherine killing Jennifer, leading to her tormenting Veronica. This stretched for like, what, a couple episodes. It was like, you know... Yeah, Catherine Cryer, we, I mean, when we saw her, I believe she got off the phone with Veronica requesting Jennifer to come over to the house to set up a meeting with the three, uh, two of them, and um, we saw her take the gun from the vault. I mean, we kind of knew somebody was going to get shot, but we didn't really know that Catherine Cryer was going to do what she did like literally it came out of left field which made her drastic change of character very odd in the following season because you kill jennifer salison in cold blood then you th chase veronica around the house with a freaking knife and then all of a sudden it's happy catherine cryer once again helping out her friend hannah yeah that makes no sense but yeah that was damn that was wow that scene was something else like Shooting Jennifer like half a dozen times and pointing the gun at Veronica is like, now your job is to get me off. And I was like, well, damn, Catherine Cryer for the win. Um, yeah, then even the scene of her making tea, like cutting the lemons and all was tense as hell. And didn't she stab Veronica? I think she's like, get out the house, get out, get out. And it's like the doors were locked. and It was like, jump your ass out of the window. Yeah, crazy moment. Um, then we get to number five, an extension of um, number six in a way. You can definitely see where this girl gets her crazies from. Um, this one is kind of a, not a cop-out answer, but Amanda's journey in general. So this is kind of like Amanda's downward spiral, basically from being raped from Professor Cannon. She didn't really go crazy in season one, basically after being raped. You know, she tried to off herself by taking too many pills and... Then Candace was able to manipulate her further to get the inheritance money. But I guess you could say this is really season two, Amanda, from beginning to end. Basically, the fact that she stopped taking her medication, um, buying a gun, stalking Professor Cannon, sticking a gun down his throat, stabbing him in the park, playing any mini money mo around the house with her family, um, getting into that boyfriend girlfriend relation uh, basically that relationship with um quincy the reason i stuttered there is because i know that she was like this is my new boyfriend quincy but you know quincy never said that was my girlfriend but yeah um amanda in general definitely a character who was off before her time i definitely feel like her story still had a long way to go and the reason, you know, it's a WTF moment is from all the crazy things she's d done from stalking Cannon, going with Quincy. Um, then, of course, the any mini money mo. And, and, and even today, we're still talking about who killed Amanda. You know, how did she die? So, yeah, Amanda Cryer in general deserves her own spot. Slap in the middle at number five. Uh, number four, another child off the deep end, Jeffrey stabbing Veronica. This was something that we've been waiting to see. Maybe not the exact way it went down, the fact that he stabbed her implant. Oh, I'm sorry. That was her real breast. I'm sorry. Even the doctor with the x-ray of it being an implant. No, that, that, that was a real boob, whatever. But yeah, it was the fact that this was something that has been built up for so long. The fact that he's been dealing with being abused and tormented by Veronica 
and he finally stabbed her. And like he said in the most recent episode, I stabbed you once before you want to try that again. And I'm, uh, you, I stabbed your ass before you want to try that again. So, yeah, then the uh, the preview for the episode was crazy. It was just like going back through all the scenes of Veronica tormenting, belittling, blackmailing, torturing Jeffrey. Then Jeffrey going back to the hotel room and um, going to his uh, hotel and just kind of like going nuts for a second. Like, you know, we hear some overlaying dialogue and some if. I don't think we got any flashbacks during that scene. We had different camera angles of Jeffrey. It felt like a freaking music video um, that, you know, he was going through all the times Veronica was talking down to him. Keep in mind, this was during the time where it was announced that Wyatt was dead because he overdosed at the Sarandon Hotel, but he wasn't dead. I think Jennifer and one cop came by the house and then Catherine was like, I have a bad feeling in my heart. This house is so empty, like the walls are screaming. So... Catherine was already feeling something. Then Jeffrey finds out and then his mom rubs it in. If anything, Veronica was glad Wyatt was dead because she knew that her son loved another man and wasn't having it. So then you throw in, if I'm not mistaken, this was around the time that Jeffrey was still at Veronica's house due to the Quincy uh, Maxwell murder, you know, blackmail again. And they were supposed to be in an engagement party between veronica and uh, excuse me jeffrey and um jeffrey and melissa so yeah jeffrey was already pushed to the edge so the fact that the man he loved was quote unquote dead she was still willing to belittle him like he wanted to go to the house in a rush he's like boy sit your ass down which i finish my drink and i'm just like oh my god so yeah jeffrey stabbing veronica was definitely a what the moment on this list number three jim's bloodbath and this actually includes Jeffrey stabbing someone else as well. Uh, this scene, I think, was the end of season four or the mid-season finale. It was one, basically when Jennifer arrested Catherine, Jim, David, and uh, Veronica. And during Jim's speech, you know, even when he called Mama Rose and ordered the bloodbath. And then that, what, Terrell, Toxic, Professor Cannon, the hitman that was at Veronica's house. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing because Jim is on stage giving this speech about how even though my dirty laundry is out there that I have two kids by my um our former maid and whatnot, I'm still going to run this political campaign to go to the mayor's mansion, uh, the governor's mansion. It was crazy because his overlaying dialogue was matching what was going on in the scenes of people being killed and uh, Hannah and Quincy Jr. at the motel and uh, Candace being choked out and whatnot. And then, of course, that leads to the climactic scene of Jeffrey coming in and stabbing Quincy nearly to death. Not fully, but nearly to death. And Candace's face was priceless as well as Jeffrey's because it's like, oh my God, what have I done? And then at the same time, Candace is like, you know, oh man, he saved my life. And if Jeffrey wasn't gay, I'm pretty sure they would probably have sex right beside Quincy's corpse because she probably would have been turned on. Because it's Candace. Anyway, uh, yeah, definitely a huge moment in the show because I think at that point in the series, that was the most deaths we have ever seen at one time on the show. I think the biggest body count at this point was the uh, Malone Warlock gang shootout in the restaurant. So, yeah, but either way, definitely a big moment. And that's why season five, um, we're predicting and not just me, of course, a lot of fans are predicting that another bloodbath is on the way because as the narrator kept saying, it's not about who will die, it's how many. Then, all right, guys, we're getting to the top two spots here. Number two, this is the, probably the most recent moment on this list. And that's when Hannah said, uh, reveals Candace's father. One hell of a cliffhanger ending from one of the early episodes of 2018 where the guy walks in with Candace. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. The guy knocks on the door and Benny and Hannah are in the room. And then that's when Hannah's like, this is your father. And everybody, I remember video, my video about that blew up because everybody and their mother were talking about, oh my God, Candace's father. What the hell? It was kind of a letdown because at the beginning of the next episode, the lion, we find out that guy isn't, but he could have been. And then we get the backstory on how Hannah got raped and how Candace was born and all that good stuff. So even though it was a disappointing moment, it was an it was a hair raising moment because it was one hell of a cliffhanger. 
Then in the next episode, we find out that wasn't the case, but it was a very, very good scene. That's what this list consists of, moments that you didn't see coming. There was nothing in the previews, nothing in the uh, episode synopsis that said this scene was coming. So that's why it deserves such a high spot. Because honestly enough, the fact that the lion tattoo was brought up is something we're still talking about today based off the character of Derek. So definitely... Number two, being such a recent moment, tells you that the Lion Tattoo Saga is something that we're going to be talking about for episodes to come. Now we get to the number one spot. And this is number one because this is my number one have and have not blog I did back in the day. And it is when the Malones killed Candace during the... I think near middle of season two, it was after, you know, Jim had Candace abducted by them alone. She was in a warehouse. And even though she said she was at the basement of the restaurant, which still made no sense whatsoever. But basically, she says that, you know, then Mama Rose and two guys took her out in the middle of the woods and for some reason took her shoes. I'm still questioning that. But basically, it took her shoes. And um, I think she was wearing boots at the time. She had nothing but black socks on. So she she had clothes on. I'm sorry. But her boots were taken. So they only had black socks. So she had to walk from the middle of the woods all the way back to her apartment. And then found out Jim Cryer had it emptied out and Amanda was gone. So basically, the reason this moment is number one is because this was the head-turning moment of the series up until that point. Yeah, Amanda, the death of Amanda, the shooting at the end of the season two had people talking for a while, but this was the first big what the moment of the show. Because at the time, Tinka Sumner was involved with a lot of other projects. I think she was in um Get On Up, the James Brown movie. I think this was before she did the work. I think she was Michelle Obama in like a Barack Obama movie when he was younger or something like that. Honestly, I haven't seen that movie, but basically this was at a time when the haves and the have nots was like the, the it show, like on Tuesday night. Like I know if I'm not mistaken, the show was still doing well with ratings, but I'm talking about when this show was the ish, like, you know, you, this was what everybody was talking about if they had on, but the fact that Candace was slated to be shot because it was in the previews, it was in everything she's crying snots coming out of her nose mama rose is like stop squirming like yay you did this to yourself you got the bag over her head and the gunshot and everybody's like oh my god is she dead but then we find out the next week she isn't but yeah that was my number one blog because i broke it down to a science that was an amazing scene and the thing was people were like well tinka sumner is getting big as a star because of this show because she's already been movies and tv shows before but this show is like brought it to a new level so her being killed off makes sense because she has all these other roles but that wasn't the case so yeah uh guys this these are my top 10 wtf moments from the haves and have nots as i said before i really want to hear your thoughts let me know in the comment section below Rank your top 10 picks. Tell me some moments on this list that are in your list, but you have some that are different. As I said before, there might be things in the comments that I've either forgotten about or didn't quite make my list. So let me know your thoughts as well as what other top 10 videos do you want me to do in the near future. So subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll talk to you soon.